Welcome back, OSLP family. Welcome, welcome. You are listening to Our Sleeve Life Podcast, and this is Kelly. This is Mel. And... We are not in our ba- in Mel's basement no, in the studio. Not. We're not in the studio today. We are on location. Yeah, we brought the studio here. Yes. Where, Where are, are we? we? <laughs> yes. We're at freaking headquarters of Devotion Nutrition right now. Yes. Devotion Nutrition. You guys know we love them. Yes. And we actually yes. have the owner, the queen of Devotion, <laughs> um, Dana. And we also have Kelly. In the studio, and we're both going to ask them all the questions. All of the questions. All of the questions. <laughs> so welcome, so, ladies. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much. So, so good to have you guys here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us on your show and visiting us in yes. South Florida. I wish it was more of sunny South Florida right yes. now. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's still nice to be. <laughs> yeah. It's our first OSLP trip. It is. Is it, it is. really? Yes. yes. Oh my yes. gosh, how exciting. Because yeah. we started the podcast and then everything shut down. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. we were kind of like, we didn't get to have our party that we wanted Mm-mm. to or anything like that. Aww. So this is like our first. All right. Started special. Off this thing. is the party. Yeah. That's right. We exactly. started with you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I have so many questions. I do too. Well, first I want to make sure everyone knows who they're listening to. So Dana, yes. introduce yourself. Yes. I am Dana Lynn Kay. I am the owner and founder of Devotion Nutrition. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm just a, I'm a, I'm in a fitness fanatic. Mm-hmm. My f- passion is fitness and I'm a mom of three. I have a 12-year-old son. I have a set of twins, oh, of girls, sure. nine-year-old twin girls. And so, yeah, I'm a busy woman over here. Yeah, yeah. you are. Yeah, yeah, you are. We're going to get into all of that yes. for sure. There's yes. so much to, to hear from you. Yes. And, and then, then we have then Kelly. We have another Kelly. Yes, another Kelly yeah. because Kelly's her best. Yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah. I am actually, I'm Kelly Frommy and I'm from Texas and I started working remotely with Dana. We actually met when um, we were both competing Oh. Um, in figure competitions. Yes. And of course, I was looking for an amazing protein, and boom. Yeah. There's Jada. There you go. And Damn. It's funny, it, it, I started out as a fan, turned recipe creator, turned affiliate, mm. turned wholesaler. Oh. Turned, I think I should share the fact that I'm a professional photographer and mm-hmm. graphic artist with Dana. Yes. And then yeah. that turned into. <laughs> Doing content on occasion. Mm -hmm. And then here I am six years later, and I now live in South Florida and work at headquarters as the um, creative director for Devotion. I just say she's my right hand woman. Ah. I couldn't, I couldn't and wouldn't want to do Devotion without Kelly. She's she's a rock star, total rock star. Yeah. And I I love love her. We we have, um, we've been through a lot. Yes. Um, (laughs) I'm sure. With Devotion. Yeah. And still doing. But yeah. that's, that's just the amazing thing is that no matter what hits us, we we know we can do it. Yeah. yeah. You so. just keep, keep pushing through. Just keep going. Yeah. And doing the tour mm-hmm. of the HQ, um, you can see like that you guys have a really good relationship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you you balance each other out. Yeah. And it's really fun. That's actually a very good observation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you can tell. Like, it. yeah. If Dana didn't think of something, you did. Yeah. And then yeah. vice versa. <laughs> like, yeah. and each other. She has my back. Exactly. It's like yes. we're always, you know, kind of you know, picking up each other's stuff, you know, we work together, but we know how to work together without stepping on each other's toes, which is crucial. I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, and we both have the same mindset. We both have the same type of goal where we want to go. We're driven. We're go-getters. And obviously with Kelly, she just kept proving herself to me. And and in my, uh, in my world, I feel like if you just keep showing up and proving yourself to me, like sky's the limit with our, our friend, you know, it goes both ways, you know, I kept showing up for her and, 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 and love her to death. And, you know, and I believed in her and it's like, here we are now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, great things happen when you just yep. believe in each other, support each other. And yes. Yeah. I mean, we and always that's, communicate. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the hugest oh, thing. God, yeah. We definitely know team. this. Like, oh, man. Yeah. Starting this, like. We learned all of that. We've learned how to yeah. communicate better. We've learned, you know, like you said, stepping on each other's toes. Mel does some things better than I do. And so you just, yeah. You know, we complement each other really well. Yeah. Because like we notice the stuff that I don't like to do, she likes to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the post office. Yeah. I'm like, nope. She's that place. I went on vacation. <laughs> Actually, I was in Florida. Yeah. And she was like, I'm never doing this again. No. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> no. And I'm like, that's fine. I will take over the post office. I'm good with that. Like, yeah. I, we I don't mind. moments like that. We yeah. Yeah. some moments yeah. like that, or too. Or just times if, if somebody's just not feeling it, you're like, that's okay. I'll do it for you. Uh-huh. Like, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't. There, there's really nothing that Kelly and I will shut 
shy away from doing. We're both team players to the point where we're like, if something needs to get done, we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And yep. that's in business or or, or personal. I mean, I've, yeah. I've had times oh, where sure. she needs to go somewhere. But I go, can I get the twins? You know, can we do this? Can, you no, know, whatever, whatever we need kids, to do to dog, get the job done. Each other's, yeah, know, we just did that the other day. I'm like, okay, I'll drop off Gwenny and pick up Jagger at the same time, come back to yeah, headquarters, think, go back over. Rumor, like, yeah, whatever, so we, both, we make it work. We yeah. understand life is busy and both of us are just trying to get everything done and everyone has a lot on their plates. Yeah. And, and, you know, it takes it takes a village. I'll never say in a million years that I do everything on my own. I don't. Mm-hmm. I have an amazing team and I couldn't do what I, yeah. what I do, what I've done. You know, I don't claim, you know, to be a one man show. I'm yeah. Never, not with raising and my kids. And we all do all the, with, all the moving parts. I mean, from, I mean, we're talking about, I mean, from her, her, her mom being up here and kidding. We all do, do, yeah, anybody, do so, everything. I've got a family that mm-hmm. nobody's too good for anything. Nobody's too Nobody's busy. afraid Nobody, to work. Everybody will step up. We get our hands dirty, roll up our sleeves and be like, where do you yep. need me? And mm-hmm. that's, that's really what has really gelled us together as, as a team and gotten us further. And well, a family, a true mm, family yeah. mm-hmm. company. Yeah, you can feel it when you walk mm-hmm. in. Yeah. yeah. So what made you even start this company? Because I know that you've done some weight training. I know you've had some gains here. Um, so like what kind of like spurred all this on? Um, I I grew up as a child who I started struggling with my weight around puberty, around 12 mm-hmm. years old. Um you know, I no, we did not have any obesity in our family. Actually, my, my dad does have a, an, an aunt who has one. But um, it was something where, you know, everybody just always kind of grew up average. Okay. Nobody was like extreme in either direction. Mm. Um, but around 12 years old, for some reason, something with me and my appetite just kind of grew. Mm. And um, with that also came a lot of stress. I didn't perform uh, school was hard for me. Mm. I had a lot of stress in school. My okay. parents were starting their company and, mm. um, you know, I was figuring a lot of stuff out, maybe myself, like, I don't know, just kind of, I, I, I don't ever point fingers at my parents because they were hustling and grinding just like yeah. we all are, yeah. you know? And, and as parents, it's really hard to be there for your kids every freaking step of the mm. way. Um, but school was really difficult for me and they really did try to give me all the tools, but school stressed me out. School work. Mm. I don't know if it's just my learning. I just learned differently yeah. than other people. I needed to be hands-on and book learning wasn't. Mm-hmm. So between that and sports and my appetite just started growing and I turned to food as a comfort mm. and I really ended up falling in love with food, yeah. um, you know, and, and I looked forward to food and, and I don't want to, I mean, yeah, I could say it became kind of an obsession. I was eating mm. one meal worried about what the next meal was going to be yeah. and when it was going to yeah, be. I remember that exact you know, feeling. Yep. Snack time at school was like my favorite time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, it was like, because it was like, I finally, you know, we get out of class and it was like, yay, snack time. Like I'm tired mm. of learning this, you know? And, um, and so anyway, I grew up and I, the weight started coming on and as much as sports as I played, it's like, you know, you can't out, out do athletics you can't work out out you know that they always say you can't out train a bad diet like i'm just eating way too many calories so the weight snuck on me time after time again and my mom would try to help me but she didn't you know she didn't really know the tools like what was going on she just i you know she'd let let's make your portion smaller let's Mm. and i was and i ended up i was a volume eater i wanted to eat a lot if my mom made me a sandwich i asked for another sandwich i gobble it down so quickly and i'd say mom have another one and she's like what you sh- one sandwich is enough. <laughs> yeah. And so um anyway, as I got older, um my mom had a terrible back problem. She has mm. degenerative disc disease, and a doctor told her you're you need a personal trainer. You're gonna have to strengthen your core muscles to fix your back and whatever. Mm. So my mom hired a trainer. She would go to see this trainer, and it was around the same time that I was really struggling with my weight. And I would go with my mom to the gym and she would be working with her trainer, and she'd say, All right, you know, go, you know, find something to do. I'm gonna go train you. And so so I would just follow them around. And after they used every machine, I would get on the machine and do it too. I'd watch wow, what they did. Cool. And then when they get off and move to the next mm-hmm. machine, I get on and do it. Ugh. And I so we, I started with just circuit training around all the machines in the gym, just getting familiar. Yeah. I mean, as a 12 year old, you know, and, um, and then I'd watch and she'd have my mom do some cardio. So then I'd like get on the treadmill and I'd want to do my cardio too. <laughs> yes. And uh, my mom was doing that for a handful of years. And I really, I really started to enjoy fitness and working out. Okay. And, um, as I got older, um, you know, the, the eating issues didn't go away. Mm. So I still was battling. I still was considering myself thicker. I was always, 
I was always over kind of it, it was weight was a struggle for me. Yeah. Um, going into dressing rooms was upsetting. Clothes didn't fit me correctly. Mm. I was very self-conscious of my arms, um, my legs. I never wore shorts. I wore a lot of baggy sweatpants. I was like really big at like, oh, I just like Abercrombie because they're sweatpants. But it's like mm. because they were big, big and comfy yeah. and they covered mm-hmm. my body and they covered and I wanted everything covered. I never owned a tank top. I mean, wow. I don't know, probably not until my not until my 20s. I didn't want to show my arms. I always wore three quarter sleeves. I was Mm -hmm. very self-conscious. And I was very aware of it because I grew up with a mom who was very petite. She had a great little build. Mm -hmm. And she didn't really, she watched what she ate, but it was never an issue. She was too busy. It just was never an issue. And so I, there's my mom and I'm like looking at my body and my body's not like my mom's. And Mm -hmm. a lot of times we grow up looking at our moms as Mm -hmm. our first role model. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, But my mom still, she was eating healthy. So I was eating healthy, but I was eating too much of the healthy Mm. things. You know, like I said, one sandwich led to two sandwiches or, you know, a bowl of cereal and a banana led to three bowls of cereal and banana. (laughs) You know, it's like, it was just, and so, um, so as the years went by, um, I just kept struggling. My mom kept thinking, is there something wrong with your thyroid that she took me to an endocrinologist? Mm -hmm. I would cry. I mean, I really, I had rolls on my belly that made me uncomfortable, buttoning my pants, growing out of things. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, so many young girls, like they go through it Mm -hmm. with puberty and you kind of almost feel like you lose control of your body and Mm -hmm. you're, um, you know, it's like you want to know what's going on Mm -hmm. mentally and why do I keep turning to food? And I I actually, we just discussed how I wrote a blog about my, my binging and my food obsession and, and all of that and using food as a comfort. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, fast forward, uh, my parents do own a, uh, so what, what I had mentioned about my parents working so hard was that my mom is a food scientist. My dad is, um, his, my grandfather was a flavor salesman and my dad Um, is a flavor salesman, worked under my grandfather. My parents, my mom was working at Lipton and um, she was developing products, working on things like cup of soup and like really famous like Lipton products. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And um, and it gets better. (laughs) And my dad was a salesman. And I guess, you know, the people, they were around the same age and on paper, they both, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, we should introduce these two. And he's a salesman and she's a scientist and they, you know, would be great together. So they introduced my parents and my parents and started dating and they met each other. So in the industry, you know, in the flavor yeah. industry, in the food industry. And, um, my parents, my dad ended up, you know, being vice president of a flavor company. My dad really knows the industry. Wow. And my mom ended up doing other things like construction and real estate. And my mom is like, she's like super woman. She, <laughs> she, she can do anything. She can really do anything. She can really she's do anything. Unbelievable. Oh. And, um, and so, Through the years, they really, um, you know, they battled their finances and it wasn't easy. My dad did get laid off and my Mm. mom, you know, they were always, and finally around when I was in middle school, around 12 years old, where, when my battles all started, Mm, they also took the biggest risk of their life and they started their own flavor company, their own flavor manufacturing company, which is huge. I mean, they really were, my dad as a salesman was working off of his Rolodex, calling people being like, Hey, I'm starting a company. You want to come with me? It's like, you know, he had to go off of his reputation Mm, and, and his not, you know, years from my grandfather. And, and, um, you know, and one of their first clients was actually CD Candy that makes Smarties candies. Oh, I mean, wow. they, my, my dad had a, had a head start because of my grandfather and because of their reputation of yeah. being really good people, mm-hmm. really good salesmen, and always putting, you know, my grandfather sold like, um, I believe like bazooka bubblegum flavor, like a lot mm-hmm. of really cool products. <laughs> wow. And so my mom knowing science and my mom being a very, very smart businesswoman, there's nothing my mom can't do if you present her with it. You know, they, they put basically all of their money together took no investor money, only the money that they saved together, wow. each selling um, one house from real estate. They each wow. got their, they went to, they got the real estate license, each of them. I believe they each sold one house, used that commission money and all of the money that my mom had saved since she was literally babysitting since like 10 years old, making like a nickel an hour. Wow. Oh my God. Right? Oh. Like put all of their money together and they were like, here we go. Uh-huh. And I remember it, there was a year that my mom was like, and she said to me, and I was about 12 years old and she's like, look, this year we're going to be keeping a really tight budget because your father and I just uh, just started our own company mm-hmm. and we're probably not going to buy birthday presents and we're not taking in pizza and we're not buying anything that we don't need and you're going to wear hand-me-down clothes from your cousins and you're going to do, I mean, my mom was like, this year we go. I have a mission mm-hmm. and we're about to accomplish mm-hmm. it. So mm-hmm. this is what we need to do. We're going to buckle this down. Woman doesn't <laughs> yes. mess around. Yeah. 
Yeah, this woman she does not mess around. And so she's like, and and my parents just straight driven. And my mom went in there and she set up, I mean, their their desks in the beginning were just filing cabinets with an old wood door on top of yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Typewriters that we were typing out labels. I was going to help label like flavor, you know, whatever. Wow. And meanwhile, I mean, you know, they they were they were working on a pretty amazing company that yeah. now mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. by 25 years now. Wow. Um, and they're a major player, major Major player. Uh, they're one of the largest privately owned flavor manufacturing beverage companies left in the world. Wow. Yep. And um, and so yeah, I mean, but I got to see that that whole thing yeah. unravel and I got to learn my business kind of mindset and hustle from them. I got to see how hard they had to work. You know, I think it's a blessing that mm-hmm. we had to have our little times of struggle, mm-hmm. um, especially me being an entrepreneur starting a small business. Yes. And so um so as the years went by, I did have to kind of do my own thing for a while, not just mm. sit in the family company because, mm-hmm. you know, you do have to work other places and do other things. <laughs> yeah, learn more stuff. And um, and so, but my struggle with food never went away. And in 2006, um, I moved out to L.A. Okay. And this was after, you know, on my blog, I'm actually even on that blog post, I'm even more, a lot of stuff happened. I mean, I had a boyfriend killed in a car accident my senior oh. year in college. I had one of my best friends was was out running and she was like hit by a truck, a literal Mack truck. And um, her, her legs were crushed. And I mean, she's now to this day, she's alive and well now. But, you know, it, it was pretty traumatic oh, for me, wow. my best friend from kindergarten. Oh. My parents ended up getting divorced um, mm-hmm. when they were about married for about 25 years. Wow. I was in college. A lot of stuff happened yeah. all at once. Mm-hmm. And what happened was for me, I was able to kind of keep my eating disorder, binge disorder, whatever, under wraps for a lot of years mm-hmm. to where it was coming in peaks and flows. But when you have finally this fine, this huge yeah. storm yeah. of this happening, this happening, this happening, my dog of 16 years dying, like yeah, I, I just this. kept having one thing. I, finally, I, I broke down. It was almost too much to handle. And I said to my mom, because I gained about 30 pounds in one month. That was your rock bottom. Yeah, it was my rock bottom. And I was in college and I called my mom and my boyfriend had died and all this stuff happened. And I just said, mom, I need help. Like Mm. I I'm using food as my medicine. Mm -hmm. And I was, I mean, I was going to get like trays of donuts and just eating them. Like I didn't, I was trying to fill a void in my heart and my stomach Mm -hmm. and my everything. I don't even know. It was, and I wasn't even tasting the food. I was yeah. just wanted all this pain to go away. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, you know, heal this pain that that of all these things that I couldn't control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could relate to that completely because when my husband left me. That's I would go to the store and just get slices of cake and that's after yeah. surgery. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah. I was like, okay, there's a point where I need to like yeah. I need to rein this in really? because I know what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. But and I'm not even tasting the cake. The cake doesn't even taste good. Like, yeah, I'm just, just eating it to eat. Want it. Yeah. But in the beginning, I wasn't even, until that storm hit, I wasn't ready to let go of my mm-hmm. addiction. I was kind of like, because I liked that comfort and I didn't want anybody to stop me mm-hmm. from it. So when I would binge on food or whatever, I would, if somebody would make a comment like, wow, you're eating, you know, wow, you've had a lot or whatever, I'd be, I, I get defensive. My mom said I would uh-huh. be dog jawed and I would snap at them. Well, I'm hungry. You know, that was, that was like another Saturday Night Live skit that my brother with that girl where she's like eating fries and then she's like, I'm starving. I'm so starving. Me. My brother's like, that's you. You're like the, you know, shut up. I'm starving. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just leave me alone. Like, I just wanted to be left alone because I'm like, this is how I heal. This is my thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like anybody yeah. with it. You yeah. see alcoholics get nasty or somebody mm-hmm. doing yeah. job. It's like they don't want to be told don't do what's making them feel good at that time. Of right. course yeah. not. Especially wow. in the to moment. Tur- to turn it around. Yeah. But eventually with you know, with my food addiction and with that stuff, I got, I was exhausted I and bet. I was tired and I finally was mm-hmm. like, I just need help. Like I can't heal from like, you know, Chris dying and, and, mm-hmm. and my parents divorced and all these, like, I obviously have a lot of stuff going on mm-hmm. up here that I need to process and eating is not going to solve it. Cause no. afterwards I felt even worse. I was just adding on to a pile. Uh-huh. Yeah. 100%. We always feel way worse after way worse we after. just eat all the things that we know that we shouldn't have ate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And so, um, so finally, uh, I, I did, 
I went to an amazing facility for women in South oh. Florida. My mom checked me in and it was mental. It was a mental health facility okay. for women with eating disorders or, or alcohol abuse, drugs, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I checked in, luckily they, they found time, they had a, had room for me and, um, I was able to go in almost immediately after my, my kind of like meltdown. Okay. And I was really blessed to be able to, to, to go somewhere like that. And literally from six in the morning till 10 at night, it was all therapy mm, and wow. it wasn't exercising. It wasn't, that wasn't the answer no. I needed that I needed to get to the root of mm-hmm. what is going on with you and how do we, you know, how do we build this, this toolbox to, of, of tools to have to combat this, what's going on with my issue with food? Because the, the, that's not going to be the last time, you know, I'm divorced now also, mm-hmm. like I, that's not going to be the last time trauma hits you. Oh, no, I've been yeah. through a life. And no. so I need the toolbox that for the rest of my mm-hmm. life until, uh, you know, I, I have these tools. Mm-hmm. So anyway, after that, I, I had a fabulous experience. I took it very seriously. I made it my job to get better. Okay. And um, I came out like a superstar student. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I put in so much work because all I wanted to do was be healthy. Yeah. And, uh, and really it's what you put into something mm-hmm. that you get out of it. Always. So I got out and then I went, um, I, I, uh, this How is, long were you, you there? guys are going to think this is so ridiculous, but after <laughs> I got out of in eating disorder clinic, we, I opened a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> my parents, I didn't want to leave Florida and we were going up to New Jersey. My, my, the family's company is in New Jersey and I wasn't ready to go back to New Jersey. And my dad's like, why don't we start a restaurant? And I was like, that would be like asking an alcoholic to open a bar it, or yeah. a liquor store. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So That's- I was like, okay, this is kind of crazy. So I did it. And fortunately, I was I was healthy enough to be around it. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say I didn't have my battles being in front of right. baked goods and we had an exhibition kitchen and we had all this stuff. But it was certainly a challenge and it didn't make me oh, yeah. have to exercise the muscles and the things that I learned. Absolutely. I, yeah. I definitely had mm-hmm. plenty of slip ups. I've mm-hmm. had plenty of slip ups through the years. I'm not perfect. No. You know, Um yeah, but what kind of like what kind of tools do they give you so that way you can the be first, successful? Well, the first thing. So when I got in there, the first thing they said to me is, "Dana, it's not about the food." And I was like, "What, what are you talking about? Of course I love it's about food. the food. Yeah. I mean, of course it's about the food. I yeah. love food. I could list off a hundred foods I love right now. Like <laughs> I did, you know. And I was just like, I didn't understand that. Right. And um, you know, I mean, this is going back. What was I? I think I was twenty one when I was checked in. So I mean, I'm forty one. So this is twenty years ago. Wow. But um, I mean, and I did art therapy there. We did a lot of. I mean, I did therapy even where um, the boyfriend who had died. I had a lot of un, unanswered yeah. questions. Uh-huh. I had to you pretend deal with I your was grief. talking to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dealing with yeah. the grief. We did, but the tools that they gave me, um, it was a lot of first I had to get rid of all the all the stuff mm-hmm. the stuff the, the the sadness I felt mm-hmm. the I had to express it it all mm-hmm. had to come out I had to kind of like like organizing a filing cabinet yeah like you know that like that's your mind yeah. and, you know, sometimes you just got to talk it out and you know when you finally mm-hmm. talk it out and you're like oh I feel better yep. yeah you're like why didn't I do that before exactly. <laughs> like I had we had a hard mental month uh last month mm-hmm. and I remember like we were both just like on edge Mm -hmm. and then and I don't know why we didn't do it before but we ended up like having like an hour long conversation just the two of us like just in the studio we were just sitting there we were just talking about everything that's happened and as soon as we were done it was like why didn't we do that before? Yeah. Because yeah. we felt so much That's better. That's all we needed. I'm, I'm yeah. not afraid to do it. I mean, I just had a breakdown. Like, a we, week just or two that, ago. Yeah, we just did that. Yeah, we just did that recently too. <laughs> I was like on edge. Mm. I was exhausted. I felt burned out. I felt stressed. I felt okay. everything. And then Kelly was like, let it out. And just I just started on. crying. <laughs> I was like, oh. And I let it out. And then when we were done, I was like, okay, I'm ready to get back to work. Now let's yeah. figure out what yeah. we, now let's now let's work on it. Now let's figure yeah. out what we need to do. And so yep. letting it out and learning to express and communicate is so so huge for people. Mm-hmm. I mean, just putting it out there. Once you get it out, it's not your burden anymore. It's yep. like you're sharing it with somebody else, whether it's a mm-hmm. therapist, whether it's a best friend, mm-hmm. a parent, or whatever. Or a dog. Or dog. Yes. Whatever. I talk to my dogs all the time. Yeah. 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 We do too. Whoever you have to. And then um, and then they did start teaching me about, you know, about building my toolbox of mm-hmm. the things that I would have to do. Um, we we spoke about earlier about, you know, if I feel it's getting ahead of these these cravings, these emotions. Mm-hmm. And if I feel that like I'm anxious, I'm stressed, I'm bored. And then all of a sudden I feel like I'm, it's building that I 
I just want to eat. I just mm. want to eat. It's like, I've got to stop that in its tracks, recognize it. Mm-hmm. It's like, and it's, it's, it's something that you have to practice like a muscle. Mm-hmm. You've got to work. Like I always talk about where I'll sometimes work harder mentally than physically in the gym. Mm-hmm. Like I will have to be like, Dana, just take a step back. Is this really what you want to do? Is yeah. this going to be the answer? And then I'll, I'll, I'll take a step back. And then I'll say, let's, you know what? You know what, Dana? You want that big piece of chocolate cake? You can have it. But first we're going to take a walk with Jagger. You got to go, you got to do two Mm. laps around the block before. And then you think about if you really want that cake. Like I've got to do those things where it's like, and I don't say to myself, no, you can't have it. Yeah. Because you want it more. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. exactly. I'll say, yeah, you know what? I'll, or uh, there are times when I physically have to get rid of stuff out of my house Mm -hmm. because I know they're triggers for me. Mm -hmm. So like if something is something that you cannot control, Get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Get rid of it. Because it's why. Why? It's like, why oh, hold on to I it? shouldn't let popcorn control me. No, well, it does. And why are you risk- like, Why are you tantalizing yourself? It's like if you're an alcoholic mm-hmm. and you know that you are – love your whatever – just get out of your house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've less likely then to go, you know, it's it's a lot more effort to have to get in your car, drive it, go find it. So yep. it's like, I'm not going to go to the grocery store at the, le- you know, if I really want that item that, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm like, but if it's in my pantry. Oh, hell yeah. You're going to. It's yeah. 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 Cause that's that, harder to resist. Cause for oh, me, it's yeah. um, like cookies from Safeway. Yeah. <laughs> and I love those Hershey damn almonds. things. Yeah. yeah. But I don't ever binge like not, I guess not binge, but like, yeah, binge uh, like I've ever had with Hershey almonds. Like I literally had like eight yeah. in like two hours sitting and I was like, what the fuck did I just do? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a lot of fucking cookies. And I had to like, think about it and be like, Oh, I was upset about this and stressed about that. And I'm literally using this as a crutch and mm-hmm. I can't have yeah. this in the house. Like no more cookies in the house from Safeway. Cause they're amazing. Cause, and I, I can't control myself. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. It's, these are things, these are soothing things. So like I found myself, granola is very fattening and I love mm-hmm. granola and I love the crunch of granola. Mm-hmm. And in college, I, you know, in the, in the cafeteria, they've got those big cereal machines. Yes. Well, I like was like granola queen. They had a huge <laughs> thing of granola. I thought I hit the jackpot. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm eating eating granola like it's going out of style mm-hmm. and I would take cups of it from the cafeteria mm-hmm. to go study and I'd sit with my book and I'd just be eating granola 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 oh after I had my dinner after I had my snack yeah after I, and it's like and then I'd realize like can I replace this granola with something else sweet and crunchy mm-hmm. and you know what I mean because it's like I, I know I have these anxiety I know I have mm-hmm. some of this stuff but like I've got to have other tools in my toolbox if mm-hmm. these things come up and because you it's almost like you've got to replace it's like when a dog chews a toy and you need to teach it like don't chew this chew this yeah. and you need to replace it it's like yes. okay because he's still gonna have that urge to chew right that's a doll like that there it's built in i still am going to feel anxious about schoolwork mm-hmm. i'm still going to have anxiety i'm there's still gonna be things so you've got to make sure that you right there you've got that chew toy mm-hmm. you've got that you know what i mean that like example so that those were those were all types of things i mean it was a lie i did 30 days there i mean i was wow. really blessed to be able to do it but i i really took it like i said that was my job that was yeah. your job. That was my job. Yeah. I mean, there was no cell phones. I mean, we had a pay phone at the end of the hall. <laughs> I had, you know, th- that was my job where I woke up, I had a notebook and I would literally had a schedule and I was going to see one doctor after another all day long, mm. every day, wow. 30 days. And it was like intensive therapy to change my life because I was going down a road of like, it was scary. Mm, yeah. Um. So anyway, I fast forward to, I moved out to LA after we sold that restaurant and my mom called me and she was reading a fitness magazine. And I used to love, I still, to, at this time, I was still loving fitness. I never gave up on my working out, my fitness. Mm-hmm. And I was always trying diets. And then the diets were so mm-hmm. horrible and bland and mm-hmm. boring. And I'd fall off mm-hmm. and um, and rebound and gain more weight. And it was like a vicious cycle. Yep. And so she called me. She said, you know, I was reading a fitness magazine. And one of these top pros has a coach. And I they read it in the fitness magazine. And he's out in Temecula, California. And that's not far from LA. You know, why don't we go out there and meet him? And maybe he'll teach you like what you need to do. Okay. And so my mom flew out to LA and we did our little road trip from Los Angeles to Temecula. And he was the coach of like one of my idols growing up, which is Monica Brandt. I had pictures of her like everywhere. (laughs) And so um, we met him. And while I was in his office, like at first he was just going to give me a diet plan and training. And while I was in his office, I was like, no, I'm going to pick a show. I'm going to pick a show. And so he was like, okay. And I was like, and then there was a show in like, I think it was like 22 weeks or whatever. And it was a Los Angeles, um, 
open or whatever it was called the Los Angeles show and it was for figure and uh and I signed up I was like let's do it and I like put it out in the universe like yeah. I'm doing this and I don't know what the hell I just signed up for <laughs> I don't know what this diet's gonna be I don't know whatever but I know I have the muscle I know I love lifting but let's do it so it was my first experience um doing a kind of a very strict, this was old school. This is before there was macros where you can kind of be flexible with your diet. This was literally chicken, broccoli, egg whites, oatmeal. Like this was like old school bodybuilder, wow. like just grind. Yep. Okay. And the protein powders out there were, I, he put, he gave me six meals and there were three protein powder meals on my plan. Every day? Every day. Damn. Every day. So okay. I had, so I ate six meals a day and I had egg whites and oats in the morning, a shake, then egg whites and oats, the th- next meal, a shake. And then I had a dinner with like chicken and vegetables. And then I end the day with a shake. That was my freaking program. Holy and shit. I wow. was starving. I was <laughs> doing so much cardio. It was ridiculous. I was, I was probably, I was, up, I got, I got up to almost three hours a day. I mean, it was, it was Whoa. insanity. I had to lose a lot of body fat. I had to really change my whole body composition. It was brutal. It was so brutal. And so, and, and really, um, yeah, it was, it was brutal. And so <laughs> I, I ended up, you know, I'm doing the diet and I'm like, yo, this diet is so boring. Yeah. I mean, this is 22 weeks of like just oatmeal That's and egg long whites. Time. And like, I would yep. go and I literally bought almost every protein powder I could possibly buy at the groceries, at the grocery store, the, the supplement store, like yep. the GNCs mm-hmm. or the whatever. And one was grosser than the next. Yep. And I was like, oh my, and I had to become so creative and my oatmeal was so boring and the whole thing was just, a, it was just a nightmare. I hated it. I, but I was like, I signed up and I yep. gave it as it back out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just like, this. so I had to get real creative. So I called home to my parents' company and I called home to the lab and I was like, hey guys, um, will you pull me like some blueberry flavor cookies and cream, like a whatever the lab. I mean, I knew my parents company because I had, you know, worked there and I know yep. the company. So I knew they had like hundreds and thousands of flavors. <laughs> so they, they sent me all of these cool flavors and with their little disposable droppers. And I started kind of messing around with the flavors of my protein powders with my egg whites. I added them to my oatmeal in the morning. I put blueberry flavor in my oatmeal. I would make protein pancakes and I would add banana flavor to them because I wasn't really eating a lot of fruit. I mean, it was just, and I, all of a sudden this like idea was born and I called them Fit Flavors. Okay. And <laughs> I, well, I was like, I'm going to start a company. And I was like, this is 2006. And I was like, I'm going to start a company. I'm going to sell these flavors yeah. drops. But back then, Stevia wasn't really, it was Splenda, Splenda, Splenda. Right. It was a mm-hmm. ton of Splenda. We used a ton of Splenda back then. I mean, I'd go through a 400 count box. Like, it was like nothing. <laughs> and, um, and so I couldn't really get this like flavoring, like to be applied how I wanted. And so... I ended up doing the show and then I said to my, I I kept trying to like come up with how I was going to sell these flavors, Mm -hmm. but I just kept coming up short because the sucralose and Mm -hmm. it liquid and the whole thing, it's just like, this is why nobody had done it before. Yeah. And the protein was still, I had found finally a protein powder company that finally was like pretty delicious protein that I kind of started just using. And it was, it was accomplishing what I wanted to do if I would add like sugar-free pudding and if if I'd add all this Mm -hmm. crap to it and manipulate the heck out of it, I could finally bake something or make something, but it really wasn't what I wanted. No, it's so annoying to do that. Like we have to do that all the time. We're just like, can I just, can it just be what it is and be good? Exactly. Why does a doctor I just want to take it and have a great texture and voice and all that stuff. And and I would try to make pancakes with the protein powder and they were like literally cardboard. One time I think I almost died choking. (laughs) Oh, I had to do And they get so hard. Like grab it out of my own throat because I was like, I think I'm going to choke to death. It was like sawdust. Oh, no. People don't understand. Isolate does not bake. Like it just does not cook well. You have to Mm -hmm. add stuff to it. Too much stuff to it. Just the whole thing was a mess. Yeah. So that's 2006, right? And so then fast forward... Um, I got, I, I ended up getting, I rebounded from that show terribly. I, I competed. I lost the 30 pounds. Okay. I looked, I looked great on stage. You know, I felt for me for my first time out. Wow. I did it. I had no idea what happens when you go off of that diet and you stop doing your two to three hours of yeah. cardio a day Uh-oh. and you just think that you're going back to real life. 
forget it. I, I was yeah. I was depleted. I was exhausted. I didn't want to see another chicken breast. I didn't want to do another yep. thing of cardio. Yep. I whoa, I had no idea. Nobody there was no social media, so nobody told me about post contest blues. Oh. Where you're like, what now? Like I don't even know where to begin. Like what, what's my life about? Like you know, because my life was just focused. That's all on you that did show. for 22 weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. literally yeah. everything is. Is it, it kind of like when you you know we when, when you deep dive into a show? Yes, yes. And then at the end of it, you're just like. What the fuck do I do now? Yeah. Yes, like, that's exactly yeah, what it's so, like. So okay, it's like even the feeling. You know, if you've had you everything guys, is you structured. Guys are married, it's even uh. like after the big wedding. You're, it's like that build up, the build up, the big day, the big day, the big day, the big day. Then you have the big day, and the next day you're like, that's so weird. It's over. Like now, yeah. what are we focused yeah. on? Like we've been talking about the big now day. Now we have forever. to live. <laughs> yeah. Now, this, yeah. Now we have to figure out how to live how life. To live yeah. and like how to just now enjoy life. And so I didn't even know how to do that. So what happened was I started like I'm like I'm just gonna eat everything I missed. <laughs> well, you know what? In Ooh. probably less than thirty days, I gained back all the thirty pounds. Mm. Plus. My metabolism was all messed up. My body turned yeah. back to it was like I felt like Cinderella, and my cow, my my twelve o'clock struck, and I, everything was gone. Oh Aww. shit! And and the bottom line, and then I kept trying to get on that plan again, mm-hmm. but I'm like, oh my god, I can't live on that plan. Like, are you kidding mm-hmm. me? That wasn't that, the plan. That's, that's not, not meant sustainable. To, yeah, it's not oh, sustainable. It was, ter- it was terrible. And so my mental then got my 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 the way I felt about my body was messed up again. Yeah. Um. And so. I ended up kind of shifting my focus. I just tried to continue my fitness, continue mm-hmm. all that. And um, 2008, I, I I I met somebody. We got married. I had a honeymoon baby. All right. Mm-hmm. In 2009, and uh, I gained 70 pounds. Mm-hmm. 70, 70 pounds. Yeah. It was a lot of weight. <laughs> mm. And I only gave birth to an eight pound baby. I'm and, sure. <laughs> and, and I was like, I thought he was going to be at least 69 pounds. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what happened? Why is he so small? Because <laughs> now I'm stuck with all this weight to lose. And so that was a rude awakening because when I was pregnant, mm. I was also like, Oh, I'm I can eat whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah. Eating for two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So anyway, so then I, uh, after giving birth to Bodhi, I was like, all right, we're going to battle back. We're going to battle back. And that was really upsetting and depressing because it was like, oh, my God. Mm. And, you know, I got some weight off or whatever. I was never quite the same, you know, my yeah. body. And I was still trying to do my fitness stuff. I was trying to do all my stuff. I tore my ACL skiing. I had, like, all these setbacks. Oh, I, yeah. And I ended up then um, getting pregnant again. And I ended up getting pregnant with my twins. Mm. Oh, shit. And I was like, I went to the doctor and I'm like, okay. How much weight can I do? I need to gain with twins. Like what? What's my number? Give me uh-huh. a number. Yeah, I'm yeah. a numbers girl right now with this. Like it's like tell me what I and he's like fifty five pounds would be your max. So I was like okay. okay. So I the 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 second time around I stayed in the gym. Mm-hmm. I worked. I weight lifted. I still did my cardio. Um, I tried to just eat healthy. Mm. I stayed active until about 28 weeks when my belly was so big I couldn't drive anymore. I, my back was killing me. I mean, they were they weren't massive babies, but it was a lot for my little well, I mean, body. There's mm-hmm. two people in there. There's two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there was two. Like and the placenta and the full and the, term. Yeah, and they were yes. and full term. Like the uh, doctor actually said, like, can we we need to take these out? Like they don't even want to go anywhere. Like they were <laughs> happy as can be. <laughs> so um, I ended up gaining the 55 with them, and but I did tear my abs pretty pretty terrible mm. i had a diastasis recti pretty bad and but i gave uh, birth to two really healthy twins and that was like the main that's that was a priority yeah and we yeah. accomplished that so now i have three little ones under three and i Oof. remember waking up and i got home from the hospital and i'm doing my night grind getting 45 minutes of sleep a night i'm sleep deprived i was all it was it was insanity to say the least i was like a werewolf like i just yeah. dreaded the nights yes and um and i had to do that but i you know what i in the beginning i just wore big clothes and i was mm-hmm. just like dana this is not the time to worry about your body you've got three mm-hmm. babies to take care of let's do what's what's first and so i ended up um i ended up just giving myself some grace and Good. around seven months is when i really decided like okay let's let's pull this together mm-hmm. i did get my abdominals um fixed after i had lost some weight um I kept wondering why are my why is my belly still hanging out yeah. like all that? And my doctor said, Dana, mm-hmm. those are your organs. Like you have no core. My my abdominals were were actually like 
so, like to the sides. They're supposed to be like this like, right. next to each other. Mm-hmm. And they were out so far that I had the most severe case. I mean, and I had a really nice stomach before my my twin. So I was like, I don't recognize it. Like, <laughs> and you're like, what the mess? fuck? <laughs> and they said, look, the only way that you're, that this is going to fit, it's not going to fix itself. It's like my ACL. It, the mm-hmm. ACL doesn't grow back. You yep. have to fix it. Yep. Same thing with the abdominals. And honestly, my back, it because when you don't have any core strength, your whole back, I mean, mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God. And I was wearing a, a, a like a core set thing to hold me in to just give me support and so we had no other choice i mean obviously with seven month old twins and a and a three-year-old going to surgery wasn't my ideal yeah like even you know my ex-husband now i mean he was like well i mean you can't live like this you're a mess yeah I, i did the surgery and i recovered from the surgery and after the surgery finally I remember standing in the mirror and and the thing is is like a, a tummy re- tuck or a, or a, any of that surgery it does it, I mean it's not a magic pill there's not no. a magic pill either I mean you, you saw the, the surgery work. and I still I mean I still was like I have this old mess to clean up I mean <laughs> and my abs were back but they weren't abs they right. were just a repaired belly so I stood in the mirror and I remember I just looked at my body and I was like what did I do to myself I just felt kind of sad and defeated and 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 so I always use the term blinders on mm. and I set a goal I said like okay I'm going to be in the best shape of my life you know whatever it was I said in the next within the next year whatever it was and I when I say I put my blinders on I basically stopped standing in front of the mirror yeah mm. I stopped look I stopped critiquing my body or speaking neg- negatively about myself mm. I st- just forgave myself for anything that I thought I did wrong or any whatever and I put my blinders on like when you put a blinders on like a horse or whatever uh-huh. and you're like no your focus is this way mm-hmm. this is what we're focusing on and nothing's getting in the way yeah and I put my babies in the stroller and we would go on walks and I would eat my healthy food and I figured out my diet. And I, what I would do is I realized my babies after they were all sleep trained and everybody's sleeping through the night, mm-hmm. um, they were all waking up at 7 a.m. Okay. Around 7, nice. give or take. <laughs> and I had cardio in my house. I mean, and and I would set my alarm for about 4.30 or 5 a.m. Mm. And I would get up in the dark in the cold, if it was in, New- in the winter, and I would just get up. I just put my shit, my my clothes on, my sneakers on. I go downstairs. I already have that coffee ready. I br- grind an everyday blinders on, and I would give myself you fifteen minutes to drink this coffee, and you're going upstairs because you better. If you don't get it in now, if you don't get it in your workout, you're gonna miss it because I'm yeah. a mom now, and those kids are gonna be- wake up, and it's gonna be time to feed them. It's gonna be time to get my, you know, and all that. Yeah. And so I'm like, this is your time. I made the time. A lot of people don't want to make the time. They're like, well, I'm not a morning period. Well, sorry, you don't like it. Like, uh, you've got other responsibilities. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like, Dana, no, I didn't like waking up. Like, who likes, likes waking yeah. up? You know, I didn't like it, but I was like, this is the time because by the end of the day, I'm too darn tired. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So I was like, this is what you're going to do. And this is the time because I had too many times that I dallied around, dilly dally too long. And then I, I do 10 minutes of cardio and babies are crying. And oh, I'm yeah. like, ah, come on. So I knew and every day, like gra- like that movie Groundhog Day. And I would just put it up, get dressed in the dark. And I stopped going in front of the mirror. I didn't even, I just put my blinders on. And every day I just put in the work. I just did the work, the work, the work, the work, the work, the work. And every day, and it seems so stupid every day because you're like, oh, what's the matter? Just, you know, 50, you know, 20 minutes of it's just whatever but it's like no it's like taking a piggy bank and every day you're putting in a quarter yep. and you're depositing mm-hmm. and you're depositing and you're depositing and you're depositing and my results started really adding up mm-hmm. yeah you know and the weight started coming off again and I planned a show I was like you know what I'm gonna prove it to myself that as a mom of three and as whatever I'm gonna get back on stage yes there you go so the, when I delivered the twins I was 210 I ended up competing again in figure and I was 123. Wow. So what, is, stage. what does that mean in figure? Figure is, it's more, it's it's bodybuilding. It's but in between it is, bikini and bodybuilding. And it's it's very feminine. You wear, you do wear clear heels, heels. which kind of like, it's, it gives you that more of a feminine look. Okay. And um, it's not as conditioned, meaning lean and ripped as bodybuilding, mm. but you are, pretty, you know, you're lean. You, you see your muscles. Okay. And you're basically showing off your fitness. You're basically showing off like the conditioning work that you do. 
did. You're showing off your muscles. They want to taper. And, they, they're and, looking for a feminine look. Yeah. Too. Okay. So figure, okay. Nice shoulders, the small waist. And, and it's evolved since I since we were competing. I mean, this. Oh the my sport gosh, now it's has insane now. And it has wellness, and it has all this stuff. And and for years and years, I mean, I I I had a walk. I walked away from the sport um, when it just got to be too much mm. muscle, too too competitive, too whatever. But I did it. It was never really my goal. Was never I want to become a pro or I want to do. I really didn't ever have goals with that sport because I really did it for my personal self okay. to like prove things for me. Yeah. And yep. It was really where I felt I belonged. I was like, I'm not really going to, you know, I just, I just wanted it to do it. Mm-hmm. Like when people are like pro car, I need to get my pro car. I never hashtag pro car. Like I didn't <laughs> care. Like that's not what I was after. Like it, that wasn't my thing. I didn't feel that was going to make or break my career because mm-hmm. I didn't have a career and I wasn't even looking no. to do any of that. Mm-hmm. So it was really just for me to like accomplish that goal. And, and it was fun. It was fun at the time. It's like, I liked the challenge. It was good. It was a hobby. That's what it really was yeah. for me, a hobby. And so um so you got anyway, down to 123. So I went down to 123 and I Damn. did the show again. And once again, the diet's boring. Once again, mm-hmm. I'm in the lab. Yep. I'm doing the flavors. I'm doing okay. So I finished the show and I was and I used the flavors and I had the lab making me my own protein. Oh sure. Um I did I invented mocha java during that show okay but i used real caffeine in mine <laughs> and so i went because i was tired yeah. yeah so i went to the lab and i was like guys i want a chocolate protein so we we had already done and i was like i need you to add because there was a there was a company out that was doing one with caffeine okay. and so i was like i need you guys to actually add caffeine to mine and make it like a java kind of whatever shake and they did and they would make they would blend up this protein for me they give it to me in a big blue bag with a twist tie on oh my I miss God. that I miss <laughs> yeah, that just a big <laughs> and I would just carry it home and um and uh, yeah this is this is before it was a it was a, a casein blend or before mm. I really dug into it so this was just kind of like isolate but it was flavored and it was good okay. and I used it and it was fine and I added pudding to it and whatever so then I um, I competed and my mom and I were, were and that time I decided I wasn't going to rebound because I was like really scared to. So I was yeah. staying on my diet and I was at the grocery store with my mom and I'll never forget it. We were walking down the aisle and we went down like the sweetener aisle or we were down the pancake aisle. I couldn't remember. And I said to mom like, oh my God, like remember when LA, when I tried to, when my first show and I wanted to make all those products or whatever. And my mom looked at me and I'll never forget. She turned to me, she goes, Dana. Do you, is this something that you want to do? Do you want to do this business? And I was like, I really feel like it, we, there's a void. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's a void in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I could develop some pretty badass products. And like, you guys have a flavor company. Like, I could do it myself. Like, I, I could develop these products. Yeah. So she looked at me and she's like, if you don't do it, somebody else will. Yep. yep. And she's like, and if if you believe that there there's a, a void in the marketplace mm-hmm. and that there's a spot for it, then I have your back. Like, yeah. then, then do it. Oh, I love that. um, I love that support because that's Mm -hmm. like super needed. Like Mm -hmm. even just doing this podcast, like you need support. You need support. You You need need the family and friends to help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, my dad, on the other hand, called me into his office and he said, you are not to do a company. My dad (laughs) said, you are not to do a company. And I felt crushed and I felt hurt that my dad didn't believe in my vision. But my dad didn't have the same type of passions about fitness and nutrition Mm -hmm. and all that that I did. You know, my dad is is a great businessman. Um, but, um, I don't think he really, he, I don't know that he understood my struggle. Um, and he understood the need in the marketplace for, he, my dad didn't, my dad knows the beverage and flavor world, but he doesn't know bodybuilding and nutrition right. and, and weight struggles and all that stuff. So I don't, he couldn't feel my, my passion the way that my mom did because my mom and I have been so connected and close. And like yeah. Best she saw you, she saw you through yeah. all of it. Yeah. And so he said, don't do it. Um, so I did it anyway <laughs> and my dad didn't find out until a purchase order came into the company for all this and yeah. but anyway it took me um, so I decided uh, it took me two years to develop our protein I actually went around buying proteins that I thought were good bad blah, blah, blah. and I and I remember printing out all of their labels and I had them all over my mom's kitchen counter and I was like circling and highlighting like <laughs> this one has this in it and this one has that in it and, oh they have digestive enzymes but this one doesn't have blah 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 you know and I had like all this and I'm like I like the flavor of this I don't like this and I I took a long time to come up with the formula of what I wanted because the lab needed something they were like like we could make you something but you got to tell us what you want yeah mm-hmm. and I was like okay I want this protein that I, that I can make a shake and it's really thick and it tastes 
tastes like a milkshake, but it also bakes pancakes and it also makes waffles and it, or, you know, and it, and it can bake and it can and fluff into the, and it was like, they're like, really, Dana? Like, this is, this is a lot. So <laughs> I was like, I think we're going to need it. It's going to need to be a blend. We're going to mm-hmm. need the casein because mm-hmm. I was using, ca- casein's really, really thick. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. almost too thick. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, we're going to need casein because that's going to keep it real moist for me. What is, for people out there, what is casein So exactly? casein it's is a sl- protein too, but it's, it, it pull. it's from, like, you know when, um. It's slower digesting too. It's slower digesting. And you know when, like, you make a uh, cottage cheese, it's like a thicker, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, curds and whey. Okay. So like the curds part that's like thick and clumpy, and yeah. then the whey is the whey isolate. Oh, like, you okay. know, like itsy bitsy spider that you know. <laughs> yeah. it's just, so anyway, I mean, just to make it like super simple for people. So casein super thick. It's slower digesting, and it's like it's always going to be like a pudding. Okay, but it's almost too much. And so I had them make me some versions, and they would do different percentages of the whey and the casein. And I kept, and I was like, ah, and I was like, no, this is too much whey. This is too thick. Oh, this is too thin. This is too whatever. And mm-hmm. we go back and forth, and I finally. Um, 80 20 blend is what mm. I chose. Okay. At the end. And I was like, this makes the perfect because this can still be a shake, mm. but you can still make it put it. It was like, it was mm-hmm. perfect. And then, um, you know, and then the lab, we worked on the perfect angel food. I decided I didn't want it to be straight vanilla, but I did want it to be like this angel food. Mm-hmm. And, and I wanted it to be like not like in your face vanilla, but like a good canvas yeah. for the flex flavors. Mm-hmm. And then brownie batter. Growing up, my mom always brought home when it was snowing and stuff in New Jersey. She brought home this like it was one of their chemists made this double chocolate um, hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. And I loved it. I made packets and packets. They would just press packets for me and the lab. And I would <laughs> I would make it. And it was the most chocolatey, delicious powder co- cocoa I'd ever had. And I love chocolate, but it was not super healthy because they made it, you know, like hot cocoa. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so finally my mom and I were, we wanted to make the, they made me up a few chocolate versions and I was like, no, these aren't, these aren't. And all of a sudden my mom was like, remember that cocoa that we used for the, for that cocoa powder? That you <laughs> She's like, have the lab pull that one. Oh. So we went, I went back there. I told them, oh my God, there's this double chocolate, hot chocolate. You got to use that for brownie batter. And uh, we used it and holy cow, they put that with some flavors. I mean, it's not just cocoa powder. You yeah. got to also complement it with flavors, yeah. mm-hmm. the right amount of sweetener system. Like it, it's a whole, whole beautiful mix Such that comes together to make a really great flavor. And so, I, I mean, my God, if I had to taste it, if I had to tell you how many prototypes we had to taste, make and tweak, <laughs> and I used to, and I remember I'd like tell everybody in and we'd line them up and I'd make all the cups and I'd have everybody taste and, and we you still know, do that. And we still do that. Yeah. But I mean, this is in the beginning phases where it was mm-hmm. literally where the faces on people were like, oh, and they're like, oh. Dana, and they're like Dana, I wouldn't buy this. And I was like, damn it. Okay. You're like, okay. And that's I like not clean it. everything up and I'm like, all right, back to the drawing board. I mean, yep. we did this for two years. That's good though, because wow. like you really need to like, uh-huh. test everything and, I and make sure with people like my brother who like my mm-hmm. brother's not even like a you know he's not a protein person like he's just whatever so it's like i was testing with people like him because if he tells me it's gross mm-hmm. um and then the other people that i was testing it with i mean i had to test it with adults but my kids i brought mm-hmm. home um you know i make the brownie batter for my girls and it was finally the brownie batter how i named brownie batter i mean i remember even the morning naming brownie batter i remember bringing it home like it was just chocolate and Bijou, I made them waffles. I made angel food and brownie batter waffles. My mom was sitting at my counter. Bijou's there. And Bijou's holding a spatula. I gave her, because she was like all of like two, I think. And, <laughs> and I had a little mixer for making it. And I poured it into the waffle maker. And then I handed the stuff to Bijou. And Bijou's sitting there. And with and she's like two years old. And she's licking like, it and licking it. <laughs> and I'm like, you like that? And she's like, I like it. And she's licking, licking. And I was like, you look like you're eating brownie batter off of like a spatula. Mm. And all of a sudden, I'm like. Ooh. brownie batter mm-hmm. like that's a good name brownie <laughs> <laughs> and um and then i said do you want to try this waffle and she ate the waffle and she loved it and then i give it to the other kids and i'm like okay if kids are liking yeah. this yeah mm-hmm. and i could trick my kids into eating some protein waffles are you kidding me and not some egos yeah oh, we just hit on something here mm-hmm. oh yeah and then that's how our protein was born and our flex flavors. I just, uh, obviously I decided stevia. We had to find the right stevia. There's lots mm. of stevias out there. Oh, oh, did not know that. Yeah, we I didn't know. Lots of stevias. And, um, and we had to find the right stevia to put the flavors with. And we started to pick the flavors of the stevias and, it just all kind of started to come together to really look like and and the whole the whole beginning of devotion. I did have a, a business partner in the beginning, 
Um, and she was out in California and it was a lot of sam- sending samples back and forth to oh, her God. and a lot of stuff. And we were working with a person now. Now we're like, we've got products. Now we've got a now we've got to come up with packaging and we've got to come up. And all of a sudden this, this company was starting to be born. Yeah. And, um, I was driving in my car one day. A lot of times these like ideas just come to me. I'm driving my car one day. And my mom at the time was dating a guy who owned a company, um, named devotion. Um, it was an alcohol company. It was devotion vodka. Yeah. uh, (laughs) It was a really cool, cool bottle. Great, you know, Mm -hmm. great vodka, all of that. And I remember kind of laughing to myself because I was like, I love that name. I'm like, oh, my God, it's so weird. I like devoted to alcohol drinking. Like, oh, I don't really get it. But I love that word. And I remember being like, God, I really love that word. Like devotion. Like, Mm -hmm. because I kept thinking in my head, like, when you're like truly into the uh, lifestyle and you're Mm -hmm. truly vested in yourself and your health and uh, and your all these things like you're devoted like yeah Mm -hmm. it's you have pure devotion because i kept thinking like what do i have what makes me keep going back to this healthy lifestyle to my cardio to my training to Mm -hmm. my what makes you devotion because i'm truly devoted like i you know and so i was like god that'd be a great name for my company Mm -hmm. and so i i was in the car i drove back right back to my office because i was working at my parents company at the time i broke the office and I got on this big board and I like huh? made like protein tubs and I made pictures of all these flavors. And then on the top, I put the word devotion and I was like, and I might call my mom in and I think her boyfriend was at the office at the time. And I'm like, look, I'm like, we're in different segments, you know? And I was like, I want to present to you guys this idea. And I had it and I like flipped over these pages on this big, it was on this big yellow, like post-it thing. And I was like, I really think this brand could be awesome. And we could call it devotion as well. And they were both like, yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We're not competing against each other. I yeah. Mean, Va- the Va- you know, it's uh, not even in the same store. It's like, mm-hmm. no problem. And so that's how the name was born. And I called my partners out in California. I'm like, guys, I got a name. And then they were like, yeah, that makes sense for a cool, <laughs> you know, because mm-hmm. I was Googling names. I was, every name I wanted was taken or it just wasn't like, it just didn't hit me right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And devotion hit me. And I was like, we got to call it devotion. Yeah. Because so. you've been devoted to. Mm-hmm. Truly. And our hashtag You're- until it's done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, our first hashtag was Ignite Your Passion. And then when we rebranded um, Until It's Done became our hashtag because until it's done, like that's yeah. how powerful yeah. is that? Mm-hmm. When you're truly devoted, is it ever done? It's never yeah, done. I, that, I was literally just going to say that. <laughs> I was like, the journey never stops. No, and exactly. I mean, we talk about it all the time about how, you know, you have ebbs and flows and the journey just kind of continues to go yeah. whether you want to go with it or not. Yep. It's a and lifestyle. You, yep. And you constantly have to make a decision on every step that you make. Am yep. I going to eat this? Am I going to work out? Am I going to, you know, and sometimes you have slumps mm-hmm. where you're not going to want to do anything, yep. but then. If if you're truly devoted to yourself, you're going to continue yes. to try every single mm-hmm. day. And and the other thing is, is that like, you know, I had been using devotion and these protein powders and stuff, uh, you know, there was a side of me that's like, okay, I just developed this like badass protein. I mean, mm-hmm. it's delicious. And like, you know, before we could launch, I mean, we were using it. We were making big bags of it. We were using it for ourselves. Uh-huh. And I was like, I could keep this as my little secret, you know, mm-hmm. and I could, I'd have the edge on people. I, I would be able to compete now without feeling deprived. I'd be able to stay fit all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. this stuff was changed my game, changed my eating, my cravings, all my issues. Like when I, I make a big fluff, this protein fluff, yep. it, you know, yes. and, but then it was like, there was something inside of me that was driving me because you know, obviously my parents' company is successful and I had mm-hmm. a job there and I wasn't driven by money. Um, and I'm very open about that and transparent. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times my mom would be like, like, you know, she, she supported me in doing, but she's like, you don't have to do this. You know that, right? Like our company is successful. You have a job here. You can mm-hmm. just, you can just chill and be you and, and we can make the protein and we'll all enjoy it ourselves. <laughs> and there was something inside of me that was like, no, like, it, because it's, I, I was like, I have to help other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and it was, I was so driven and even though I was going against my dad who really my my dad was trying to protect me he wasn't Mm. saying no you can't live out he was saying I'm trying to protect my daughter from the evils Mm. of freaking business yes Yes. business is a beast and I don't want I don't want you to get sad that Mm -hmm. it's you're gonna you may fail because my dad's seen a lot of businesses Mm. come and go and Mm. fail of course and so he was really scared he I know my dad was trying to protect me and I know he meant well because he was really scared he's like you don't know what you're about to go to go up against Dana and so I get it 
but there was just something inside of me that's like, mm-hmm. I got I to gotta do this. I got to help other people. This product is too good to just keep to myself. Mm-hmm. And... Thank I God just, you didn't keep I just, it to yourself. I just, did oh, yeah. it. I just did it. And I was like, there's something inside of me. And every day, so not only every day after I decided to launch, did I hop out of bed and want to do cardio, but I hopped out of bed excited for the next day of life with devotion. And even though the days were stressful and there were a lot of tears and there were a lot of stresses mm-hmm. and it was almost a stressful score mm-hmm. for me, but I was, cause I'm trying to learn this. My parents couldn't help me. They didn't, they never launched a brand. Mm-hmm. They only made finished products for people to, to for them to launch. Like a my brand. parents mm-hmm. never took a company to marketplace. Ah, So I'm literally learning something that nobody in my family had ever done. Mm-hmm. And so that was really stressful. Absolutely. Because I'm like, now how are we going to get all these customers? How are we going to get these people to buy it? Marketing mm-hmm. this, that. I'm trying to do it. My, you know. And so my partner is hustling and we're hustling. And we're just all trying to figure it out. But something in me, just the fire... Never. I mean, now I don't have a partner anymore. Um, her passion in wasn't what mine was, and that's okay. Like she kind of hit her crossroads where she was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm not into it anymore." I just, mm-hmm. she just didn't have the. Pa- but I was like, and she wanted to just crumble the company and say, "Let's just dissolve it. We'll take our money back and say goodbye to devotion." And I was like, "I'm sorry, I, like, I can't no, do that. This is my baby. Like, this is a baby. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Like I've we've worked too hard, and I believe in it too much. So it's like mm-hmm. it was good, but it's good. She knew her time, mm-hmm. and that when she had enough. But if you're you, if you're going to stay in this game, you better be passionate or you do have to get yep. the hell out. It's true story. You, know? you do. It, so, is a, it is a busy... The cutthroat well, industry. Yeah. The it wellness is. It really world is, is insane. Yeah. And like, because we're like... Because you're in it and we're like dipping our toes in it by like <laughs> meeting people like you and yeah. talking and going through it. And Reviewing. we're just like, this is crazy. Like all yeah. the things that you guys have to go through and then us just like, you know, listening and trying to guide too. Because yeah. like this... It's the hard. Bari- yeah. Because this bariatric world, like they they need so much, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, how do we service all of those things at the yeah. same yeah. time? Yeah. Yes. But that's the thing. You try, you just, you got to... Um, just really focus on the stuff that you're really, really good at. And the other yeah. stuff ends up kind of eventually coming out too. Mm-hmm. But you've got it like for so many years, I just angel food and brownie and people are like, do you want to do other flavors? I'm like, no, no, no. Like no. I've got to first get my <laughs> reputation down. Yeah. I've got to first, mm-hmm. uh, I've got to make sure everything is perfected. I've got to make sure, you know, it's like there's, you do first things first and you can't mm-hmm. please everyone and you can't take over the world. You've got mm-hmm. to first start and that's okay because you know, it, it builds, you first need the experience. And I always say timing's everything. Like, thank God certain things didn't, didn't take off for me when I wasn't ready for them. Right. Too. Yeah. And thank goodness things didn't take off. And then my partner decides mm-hmm. to pull out or, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like, oh my God, everything happened correctly. And mm-hmm. I now, you know, I'm not overly religious, but I have a lot of like faith and I'm very spiritual. Mm-hmm. And I just believe in, you know, timing and things mm-hmm. coming when they're supposed to and happening when they're supposed to and also relaxing and being like look you're not going to take over the world tomorrow and yep. but but mm-hmm. you're going to you're going to put one foot in front of the other every freaking day and just yeah. like those little steps I told you about yep. those little in the jar mm-hmm. they're going to it's going to add yep. up Yep, it always does. I yes. mean, with this podcast, we have no idea it was going to be this what it is today. Like, could you think about last year this time that we would be in Florida in a devotion like no. office? <laughs> no, <laughs> no fucking way. I mean, I had never listened listened to a podcast. Yeah, she's I didn't mean, listen to them. I I was like, okay, well, but every I little guess thing, we, every yeah. little thing, and I, that's why. Also, you know, I think you guys had reached out to us about doing a review on protein mm-hmm. and every little thing. Like, I've I remember always, that when you, yeah, when you, I learned. I was down in the keys actually on vacation. <laughs> I was like, I mean, it's so funny because Kelly gets mad at me because I'll say like, well, I'm not really on vacation because it's like I, it's hard for me not I'll to. Go, work. It's okay to take a day yeah, off. Right? And it's hard. It's okay. okay. I remember being yeah. with my coffee in Key West, and I'm supposed to be or Key, yeah, Key West. Yeah, you're down the keys, and I'm like still checking. Yep. emails and doing my stuff but I, you know I learned from my parents a long time ago when they were little when their business was this tiny little business mm-hmm. and they there's a story about a salesman who serviced my parents selling them citric acid and citric acid is like a really huge component in um you know in beverages and like mm-hmm. iced teas and my parents do a lot of that and so the, so I, I can't remember the story exactly but I remember the sales guy was like was like look, I'll sell you, um, 
I think my parents couldn't even hit their minimums like to order uh, the citric acid. And my parents were like, look, if you sell us this small amount, I, we promise that we're going to, we're going to try to do business mm-hmm. later. And the, the sales guy spoke to his company and that he was like, look, I'll take the account. Like, mm-hmm. let me just, I have faith in this company, whatever. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, it ended up, my parents are like record breaking citric acid, like orderers, <laughs> like, bring in truckloads. This company can't even keep up with it. And it's like the whole, the moral of the story is like never, you know, you don't dismiss any little guy. You never know Mm -hmm. who's going to end up being Mm -hmm. this, like who's going to be important to you Mm -hmm. and your business and your growth and your stuff. And so with me, it's like, I love, you know, I, everybody who reaches out, like I love to kind of like, you know, whether no matter what community they're from Mm -hmm. with a lot of people in the keto community, weight Mm -hmm. watchers, weight loss, bodybuilders. And it's like, I like to be part of all those communities Mm -hmm. and you never know who's doing Mm -hmm. something special out there. And then like with you guys, where I'm able to reach a lot of people and help a lot of people Mm -hmm. um, with your podcast. And so when I saw your email come through, I was like, yeah, I love it that these girls are like (laughs) helping others find Uh a great protein because that's what you guys are doing. You're helping these women like sort through through the 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 crap, the crap. Oh, yeah. and yeah. it's yeah. so Huge. much out there, and it's overwhelming. It is very if overwhelming. I had to start right now, I wouldn't even know. Oh my god, I would. I'd be like, what company? I don't even know. That's how yeah. I was. That's what I found devotion. Yeah. That's how I was. I was just like, I was ready to throw in the towel. Yeah, there was I was too like, much. Okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, because it's overwhelming. I hadn't competed in like fifteen years, and then I yeah. found Dana, and I was like, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. When, yeah. We, when yeah. uh, you started. But actually, both of us, when we both started our journeys, it it was like premiere. Premiere was all that was out there. Yeah. And you would buy your cases and you would just choke it down and it was watery and (laughs) gross. There was no flavor to it. Sorry, but yeah. 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 Uh There was one time I remember opening a bottle of premiere because I was like obsessed with putting it in my coffee. So I I made profit before it was even like a a big Mm -hmm. thing. Right. So I shook it up and I put it in my coffee and I remember taking a drink and this big film like came out. uh, It was so gross. And I was just like, (laughs) I can't do this anymore. And I like, I had to throw my entire coffee away because it was just like, yeah. Yeah. And it was just, and I've never looked back. Like I was like, no, I'm not doing this. This is disgusting. I I would get such anxiety when we were about to launch devotion about the other brands and about Mm. my competitors. And my mom Mm. would always say to me, like, like, don't worry about the other competitors. Just focus on you, focus on you. Mm -hmm. But one year we went to the Olympia and I went around to all the booths and I started, I just collected tons of samples of protein Uh and I filled up a whole goodie bag. And I remember getting home, (laughs) dumping them all out next to my sink. And I was so nervous because I'm like, I might be able to compete with all these protein companies. Mm-hmm. And I would rip one open. I'd put, I'd, I'd shake it up, drink it. Oh, ugh, I'd spit it into the yep, sink. Yep. I literally did it with probably 20 companies before I finally said, you know what? Game on. Yeah. Let's go. Because these are horrible. Well, yeah. And I remember you told us like you were so nervous watching our review because you I still get we it. watched it together. <laughs> we watched it together. No, that's we my, only, like, my first and only fight with my boyfriend. First oh, that's and right. only fight yes. with yes. my boyfriend. I was at Costco and I was, I couldn't, fo- I, I was so excited and we were, Costco was about to close and you guys, and I'm on the live and you guys are about to review it and I'm crashing my car <laughs> into the side and he's like Dee, Dana, Dee, Dee, come on and I'm like he's yelling at me and I'm not paying attention we're trying to check out the checkout guy is asking me for my credit card my stuff and I'm not paying attention I'm like I'm like babe I gotta, I gotta see what they're gonna say they're about to try brownie brown they're about to and he's, like, and he's like are you kidding me like can you you can't put your phone down and like he didn't understand that I was like I, I'm like I like these girls like I really want to see what they have to say like you know and he was so mad at me and he's never like, he, I have the coolest boyfriend ever <laughs> We never get in fights. We never. He was actually like, we got in the car and he was like, he was like, I don't like it when people do that. And I was like, what? He's like, not pay attention when we're in the, like, he's like, you're crashing the car. You're not paying attention to the guy. Like we're trying to check out the place is closing. And I was like, it was a podcast, girls. I had to <laughs> he was like, we finally were in the car. Finally, I'm like, are you really mad? I kept trying to explain to him, like, right. you know, and it was like, that's the only time. Like, we'll still mention it. And he's like, yeah, that wasn't cool. And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time. Though. Like, I had to watch it, though. I had to pay yeah, attention. Yeah. Well, because you've seen us, like, be like, No, oh. you guys are brutally honest. And I yeah. love that about mm-hmm. you. So that's why I was like, all right. I mean, if there's some reason they don't like our stuff. And I don't know. I don't I'll go uh, assume it, you know, anything. Yeah. I yeah. mean, 
we're confident, but we're not cocky. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I remember trying it, and I was just like, "What? What is this magic? <laughs> it's, it's the texture. Yeah, is what yeah. does uh-huh. it? Because the my biggest thicker complaint texture. is the uh, how liquidy everything is, mm-hmm. and then the the flavor yeah. doesn't stay through it. Yep. Yeah. And so I'm like, "What the fuck? Like, I don't yeah. like this at all, and yeah. I I don't want to like." Tell people to have this. This is like yeah. awful. Yeah. And we've tried yeah. a- texture's huge. Yeah. With, with devotion. We've tried oh, we've spit up stuff. Like it's yeah. it's been a whole thing. I just there's been times where I've quietly gotten up, spit <laughs> it in the sink, yeah. and quietly sat back down and I'm just like, nope. I'm well, not and you know the <laughs> other issue that uh prompted me actually a massive, massive issue that prompted me was that I was using a protein that I really liked. And uh, I was at the gym one day and my husband at the time texted me and he texted me an article that the protein that I was using was in a law. They were in a lawsuit because they found out that a lot of these top protein companies were amino spiking. And I was like, what the and I I remember I felt like somebody cheated on me like that mm-hmm. when you're like punched in the gut mm-hmm. and you can't believe what you just found out because this is a protein that I had been I told my mom to order I told my friends to order they'd all mm-hmm. say you know because they'd see me in shape yeah. and they'd be like Dana what are you using so then mm-hmm. I'd recommend it and I'm mm-hmm. recommending this to everybody and it, they made claims on their tubs that they it was 26 grams a, a protein a scoop mm-hmm. okay so here i'm thinking i'm getting 26 grams yep. a scoop yep they did third party testing and there was 12 grams a scoop the rest of it was just amino fillers. spilling filling yes yeah, fillers oh. um creatine and aminos i was mortified i was mm. so upset i mean i remember i think i even cried i was like what the hell i felt so betrayed and yeah. i swore i went home i threw everything away and i swore i'd never trust another protein company again i'm gonna make my own stuff because here i'm giving it to my kid no wonder why people have gas and bloating yeah you're not even you're eating a bunch of fillers and creatine and all this crap mm-hmm. and it's like what and then you're telling your own mother to put it in her body and you're mm-hmm. giving it to your kids a yeah. little, little protein shake with banana i was mortified i'm like i'm going to, i'm making my own stuff so that was another big reason because yeah. to trust in the industry I mean we we put third party testing uh, letters even on our website to mm. prove like we've mm-hmm. tested all of sure our did. stuff yeah we're, we're you know we're we stand behind the brand I'm putting my face on this brand like are you kidding mm-hmm. me like yeah. I'm, I'm not selling anything but something that's like the best quality mm-hmm. and it's, you look I, at a, a lot of protein labels they'll they'll say on there nobody not for use under 18 you won't find that on our label oh it's, it's completely safe yeah mm-hmm. oh. Oh, people will be like, can I use pro? Can my kids? What are, can your kids eat a chicken breast? Or can, can I mean, or nursing mother yeah. stuff like that? Of course. Yeah, we're like, we know, don't have anything to consult hide. your if, doctor. If you have a problem but, with something on the label, if you're allergic to something, yeah, or cocoa powder, or something like that, right. that's Absolutely. different. Mm-hmm. But ev- what's on that label is what's in that. What's container. in the product? Yeah. So you know, and so it's like, what? There is no reason that. You, uh, there's no stimulants, fillers. There's nothing no, in there nothing. that you shouldn't be well, having. I mean, that's, that's what the world fantastic. wants. Like transparency is exactly. huge. Yeah, exactly. And people are sick and tired of people just being lied to all the time about what's mm-hmm. in their food or what's even know. in their news, whatever it is. Or like, can we just be transparent about this? Why exactly. is it such a big deal? Yes. Yeah. Like, like you guys always honest. say, break the stigma. That's what we're trying to do with our with with the wellness brand. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, bring yeah. it out in the yeah, light. We wellness yeah. products we want to bring. We mm-hmm. and we only want to bring all the highest quality. I mean, the the companies that we work with to source all of our ingredients and our vitamins, our CBD products. Mm-hmm. They're all the best. I mean, our CBD products all have um, third party testing as well. They all have lab results. They're that's all, all on the website the as well. Deal. The like links to the website, stick, everything, our, our lip balms, anything that we do. That's yes. crazy. Yeah. 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 I love it. I mean, yes. <laughs> I haven't found something yet that I don't like. That's true. Aww, that's true. That's it. That's I can't awesome. wait for you to try the sleep. Yeah, no. I'm excited. I'm excited for oh, this review. Oh. We're gonna send you guys with a little. Are you gonna, bag are you gonna do a review? Are you gonna do a review? Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. For the sleep. Yeah. 100%. Yes, yeah, That'll be yeah. Because yeah. I'm gonna. Because I mean, when I say I don't sleep, I don't like there it's will legit. be. So there you was, might be a tougher cut. Co- it might take you a little. It might take you to yeah, build up but, in your system. Yeah. But you'll, Which, and your sleep patterns will be better, and you'll definitely f- get you. Yeah, you'll have to. Everyone's different, but if you're mm-hmm. saying you're a tough cookie, then just let it build up in your system. Yep. Give the nights, and then do all the healthy sleep practices. You know, try to be off your phone so you're not that's stimulated. That's the hardest thing. That's the she hardest won't thing. Listen to me, Dan. That, she won't. that really messes I your brain know. up before bed. Yeah. It's really hard because yeah. I well, fall I'm asleep like, with the TV on. Oh, oh no. I know, which is so yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's so okay. bad. Okay, first off, black screen. Yeah. Okay, use the black screen on YouTube. If you have to have the TV on, do the black screen white noise. So it'll go black. Oh. So you don't have that light in there. 
Oh, I it's the simulation. I'll send you light one. Is the oh, biggest yeah. problem. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll send you one to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. I just need something, like, because mm-hmm. I don't even watch it. Like, okay. most of the time, I, like, have my head down and my eyes closed, I'll, but it's, I'll like, I need that noise. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you some good my ones. My girls, like, okay. like, a noise. They do ocean sounds now uh-huh. with, oh, like, yeah. a little light. And- but now they make those where, where it'll, like, go, go black within, like, 10 seconds so that oh. you have a black room, but you still have that that Or, like, rainstorms, thunderstorms. Yeah. Yeah. That's my oh, favorite. Like- <laughs> yeah. Before we wrap everything up, I wanted to pinpoint the fact that, like, you are going to be a sponsor of the Bayreactive Society. Yes. 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 We're yes. The sponsor. Yes. Sponsor. Yes. Sponsor. Yes. So how did that all come about? You know, it's funny. One of my affiliates, Maddie. This, no, this is so we love like Maddie. Maddie. We love so Maddie. I'm in my I'm in my closet getting dressed after a shower, whatever. And I put on Instagram stories, and I was just letting them run mm-hmm. because I was just listening. I, yeah. I wasn't watching, and I was just letting them run. And um, and Maddie's came on, and she was saying, like, "We're so excited for this. Um, for we'll we'll see you guys at the retreat." And she kept saying, "Retreat with the mm-hmm. retreat." So I'm like, "What is Maddie doing?" And so she, she loves devotion, and I've been in touch with her a lot Mm -hmm. so finally I got back on I went back I grabbed my phone and I responded to her story and I said are you guys doing a retreat because I could send you guys some samples to put in your goodie bags for your Mm -hmm. retreat and she's like oh no this is like a really she's like this is not my retreat but this is you know and she started talking Mm -hmm. about this whole ordeal and I'm like oh okay this is not what I do I didn't realize this so she directed me to um to Brie Brie and um Stephanie. Yep. Mm-hmm. Brie and Steph, and they're yep. great. They're awesome girls. And mm-hmm. so she do, and Stephanie and I had a call. I reached out to Stephanie and I was like, I heard you're putting on a retreat and like my products are great and they'd be great for your community. And she goes, uh, Dana, I use your products. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she does. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, I don't introduce myself. I'm Dana, owner of devotion. She's like, I know who you are. I yeah. make pancakes every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Okay, well I'm not assuming anybody anything. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm not, you know, like I don't I don't believe in like coming in there like I'm somebody. So I just introduced myself and she was thrilled. She's like, I'm loving that I just heard from you. She's like, mm-hmm. I actually would love a sponsor of a product that I'm actually using. Yes, exactly. And so I was like, oh my gosh, well, let's talk. We set up a call and she told me about the retreat and she told me about all the different levels. And I'm, finally I thought about it and I'm like, honestly, like devotion should just be, be like, it. this is a game changer mm-hmm. for your mm-hmm. crowd. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to be there. I want to yep. bring my team. Um, I want to like hook you guys up with like a lot of great devotion tools. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, like, these are tools and these are you know powerful for women who mm-hmm. are on that weight loss journey. Yep. And mm-hmm. so she was like thrilled and I was thrilled. And, and so my whole team was thrilled. I mean, I even, I told my mom, my mom's mm-hmm. like, I'm going. <laughs> yes. And yep. so, yeah, we're going to, Kelly's coming and we're going to take, take our team. And it's, I'm really excited because, uh, to get in front of people, you know, over Instagram's one thing we can't, mm-hmm. we haven't done shows in a long time. You know, we used to do a lot of fit expos and mm-hmm. things like that. So, but to get in front of all like-minded women, yep. mm-hmm. uh, women who are on the same journey that have a lot of similar goals, mm-hmm. um, with their health, and and their lifestyle that's mm-hmm. what we're aiming for to get over there and um you know if if, if we can we can help that's what we want to do so we're, we're really excited yeah i miss that i miss yeah. that that one-on-one too oh, because yeah. when you see somebody's face yeah the first time that they try brownie batter yeah or that they try fluff and they're mm-hmm. i mean it's like it makes me want to cry yeah because you Aww. see them and they're just like so ex- mm-hmm. you know you've changed that person's life yeah, yeah. you know well, and it's good because like we preach about, you know, our, our weight loss surgery being a tool, yeah. you know, it is a tool. It's you a tool. have to, you have yes. to utilize that tool in order for Absolutely. it to work. And that's what devotion gives you is just another tool. Like you said, in your toolbox yeah. yep. that you can use to be successful Absolutely. in your journey. Yep. And as long as you utilize that tool, you can go as far as you want yeah. yep. until it's done. Absolutely. It's done. Yes. I love that. It's never done. It's yeah. never done. <laughs> well, we're going to be there too. So that's yes. nice. Fun. That. So I exciting. So yes. I didn't even realize that. And then when they sent me over the, like the lineup and they uh-huh. said their spear, I'm like, oh my God, there's my girl. Like, oh, yeah. oh my God, that's so perfect. And then uh, we, that's before we even knew that you guys were going to travel because it's yep. a while ago. Mm-hmm. So at first I was like, well, at least we're going to get them, meet them there. But now, I mean, now we're good. Yeah. Buddy, so <laughs> I know. It's going to be better <laughs> when we go in San yeah. Diego. Oh, it's gonna be great. Yeah, because yeah. Eric will be there. Dylan yeah. will be there. Awesome. We're, gonna, we're gonna have the whole crew. So yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but we're bringing, we have, um, my mom is going and her boyfriend, Rocky, with the, uh, with the race yes. car. Like, uh-huh. coming, and my is boyfriend will be coming? there. And Steph is coming. Yeah. Yep. She's, she's really big in this community too. She went through the weight loss. She was uh-huh. like 300 pounds and she's, yeah. yeah, lost about 160, I think. Total. Yeah. So, yeah, she's, That's yeah. crazy. I mean, we, we've got a, a good little little Hell team yeah. Yeah. Too, yep. so yeah. it'll be fun well thank you for having us in yes. your office and yes. doing all this so it's been a blast and oh, you guys listen, you. watch the YouTube because we're gonna have more stuff coming on there yep. and don't forget to subscribe to our yeah, YouTube channel yeah go to um, Arts Leave Life Podcast on YouTube yep. and Devotion Nutrition on YouTube say, subscribe yes, we're, on, we're on we're on YouTube we're on too yes subscribe. and we will have all the links for you yes yes down yes. below great cooking and videos if you love us as much as you as we think you do, uh-huh. go over to patreon.com forward slash OSLP and sign up to be a patron and help support your girls on our mission to break this stigma. Yeah, it helps us bring more companies to you guys, to your yes. door. And then we also have our monthly meetings. We get to yes. hang out with you once a month. Exactly. So. All righty. Well, thank you guys. Thank, and you. thank you. We will see, see you next time. Bye. Bye.